Welcome for joining us at home with APS. Hi, I am Mrs. Gaudette. Welcome mathematicians, I am Mrs. Sears. So we are gonna be changing things up a little bit. We'll be doing some math instead of language arts right now. So we're gonna be doing some math games, which is the best, most fun thing in the world. Let's start off with our very first game. We have, just really fast, we have some math games. We're gonna be trying to get hit some of these, but we'll be starting with on target. So on target, it ha requires you to have one dice, and it requires you to have um, a game board. So we have here our game board for on target. Again, this is something very easy that you can make up at home. You can easily have all this written just down on a piece of paper. The target is, is we're looking for to get as close to 100 as we can. And as you notice, both Ms. Gaudette and I each have a, uh, a board to work off of. So if you are making this, you would need to have a separate game board for each of the players that is there with you. So just a reminder from earlier in this week, uh, Ms. K may held, showed you how to make at-home dice if you do not have dice. That template will be online for your use to print off if you do need it. So the very first thing is you have a partner. In this game, I'm going to roll the dice. So I'm gonna roll my dice and I have a four. What I have to do now on my game board, oops, I did forget to put my target, which is always 100 uh, with the game on target. I have to decide where am I gonna put that four, where will it be the most beneficial to me to make 100. Remember I have a number here that goes with tens and ones and a tens and ones trying to make 100. If I put my four in my ten spot, how much more would I need and uh, how much more would I need to do to make 100? So if my four is in my ten spot, that's 40. I would need 60, right? So I would have to get a six or something bigger over here to make that 100. Remember, these are strategy games. So I'm thinking, because I want to beat Mrs. Sears really bad. <laughs> so I am going to go ahead and put my four in my one spot. All right. So I did also want to remind you um, in the packets that are coming home, not only will there be a dice uh, template that you could make, but all of these games that we are providing for you um, will also be on, um, on in our uh, website, on our website for you to be able to download and use um, and be able to play these games on your own. So you will not have to create those. And just so that um, you guys know, we are trying to model uh, social distancing. So if you notice, um, we, we, will, of it. <laughs> we will be trying to stay at least six feet away from each other when we are playing the game. So if she is back there, I will be up here and I'll be rolling the dice, okay? Or rolling the die in this case. All right, I got a six. So now again, just as Ms. Gaudette had talked to you about before, think about strategically, where would you wanna place that six? Where is it gonna get you the biggest bang for your buck as far as to get closer to our target number? Since that's a pretty high number and I know my cube only goes up to six, I'm gonna actually put my six in the 10 space over here. Now becomes my turn again and I get to roll the die and I got a two. So of course I'm gonna put it in the ones. Good luck for me. <laughs> All right, my turn. I got another six. Um, now I wouldn't wanna probably put the six plus the, the six over here, because if I'm thinking six tens, that's 60. And if I did six tens over here, that would be another 60 or 120. And remember, I can get close to 100. I can go over if I need to, but that's already, in my brain, that's already telling me that that's gonna be 20 over. So actually, maybe I think, let me put that into the ones over here. Let's try that. All right. And I got a five. So I am going to put my five in my 10 spot, one of my only spots left. All right, my next one. 
Boy, I must be on a roll today. <laughs> I got a six again. <laughs> okay, now I hope I get a smaller number so I'm not super, super over, but I'm just gonna go ahead and place this six over here on my other ones. All right, I got a five. Ooh. <laughs> oh, she might be winning me on this one, folks. <laughs> All right, let's hope I go for a low number. Three. Okay, so I'm going to put a three here. Ooh, we may be very close. <laughs> All right, the next step in the first skein is to take your two numbers, add them up, and see how far you are away from 100. Now, you're allowed to be under 100 or over 100. You're just trying to get as close to 100 either way. So we're going to do some math really fast. You want to talk through what you're thinking? Sure. I know I have 50 and 50, so I know that's 100. And then I have a 4 and a 2, which is 6. So I know I have 106. So you notice I ran out of room on the paper. And the next piece that is, is how far away for you, were you from 100? So I am 6 points, 6 digits something away from 100. Six positions, six Thank bases. You. All right, so I have kind of some weird numbers happening up here. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do more of my landmark numbers in my head when I'm thinking about adding those two numbers. So if I had a 66, I know that my next landmark number or friendly number would be a number that's a multiple of a 10. So I have 66. I'm going to use part of that 36. I'm actually going to use just four of that 36 to make me get to 70. So that way when I have 70, um, I can then use the other 32 to add to that to get my number, which would then make me, so I have a 70 and a 30, which is 100, and I have two extra. Oh, so man. I think I did really well in that I am only two away from 100. So who won that game? I did. <laughs> so we would put a check mark by that person who won that round. And then you continue playing games just like that through game two, three, and four. And whoever has the most check marks wins the overall game. That is on target. All right. So we're ready to move into our next game, which is called. Now we say it wrong. Achi. No, I didn't sneeze. Thank you for telling me I didn't sneeze. But Aki <laughs> is our next game. And we are going to need, we each have some sticky notes with our particular color. I'll go ahead and use that too. Um, we each have sticky notes. Now, for, for counters, and I know you may not have counters at home, Think about some um, things that you could be using for counters instead. Things like money, like if you have a penny, you could um, flip both sides of the penny to indicate who's which. So one person could be heads, one person could be tails. You could go out and you could pick up a few rocks. You just need four counters to start with. We are using sticky notes. Um, at the very least, if you're also playing the game um, on like a table or on the floor, you could cut up individual pieces of paper and just put your initial on it. So I could be J for my first name and she could be T for her first name. So you can also identify that as where you're supposed to be at as well. So you're going to need four counters and this is kind of like tic-tac-toe. How many of you have ever played tic-tac-toe? I thought you did, yeah. This is actually kind of like tic-tac-toe, but you have to follow along the lines of the pattern. So really how this starts is I'm going to go ahead and pick a space that I want to go ahead and start with. And I'm going to try and be clever. You want to be very sneaky because you don't want that person to get a tic-tac-toe right off the bat. Oh, man. I thought it would make it a lot easier if she'd allow that. Okay, so she picked a different spot than I. I still got to go to any open spot. So I'm thinking, how about if I did, I'm going to go there. Of course, I have to stop her. She's not allowed to have tic-tac-toe with me. <laughs> now, where else could I go to maybe possibly do this? Hmm, I'm going to be very strategic. <laughs> no, she wasn't. <laughs> But what she didn't notice is where could I go? But I already have it. Ah, 
Yeah, darn it. <laughs> All right, we're gonna uh, fix that. <laughs> That's okay. She won the game. I wasn't being very strategic at I'm all. Your spot and stop my tic tac toe. Okay, I'm gonna stop. Well, no, but then I get the tic tac toe. Move yours. Okay, I'll go over here first. We're trying again, <laughs> so I can show you the true rules of the, how awesome this game is. Besides tic tac toe. <laughs> All right, so she did block my tic-tac-toe that I did not notice. Whoops, oh well. So uh, now I would go ahead and have to find another place to move. So again, I gotta find something that's an open space and here we're kind of like at a standstill. Wait, 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 now we're at a standstill. So we can't go anywhere else. So the only place we can do is we can move within where we can on the board. So let me see, I'm gonna try going over here. And what you're doing is trying to rearrange where you can go to an open spot to be able to make that tic-tac-toe. And you can only go on the lines. And you can only follow along the lines. All right, let's see. Ooh, I might be able to. I'm stuck. Originally, woo! Yeah, she thinks she <laughs> won, but she really the did. The first time she won, because I didn't <laughs> notice it. So, but that's how you play Achi. You really wanna like first, Try to get your tic-tac-toe, and then when you um, are blocking, when you're blocking the other tic-tac-toes, you want to be able to move on to the spots following along the lines where there could be another spot that is open. But that's how you play Achi. All right, our next game is Add em Up. So we're going to pull up this game. And let's, can you grab those sticky notes for me? Yep. Because we'll need them again. So Adam Up is kind of, a little bit kind of, thinking of the strategy of connect, yeah, connect four. Connect, connect four. four. So it's in the strategy of connect four, meaning the purpose of the game is try to get your counters four in a row, horizontal, vertical, diagonal either way, or a two by two square. So I could have two by two square and get my get the get win, win the game, connect four. I always kind of go back to connect four. What you will need for this one is you will need counters. So again, rocks, erasers, anything you have at home, You just as long as there's two different ones for each of you. And you will also need two dice. So what this one is, is you're going to have to go ahead and roll the dice, add up the two numbers, and then place your counter on the spot that works. Now if I have a six and a two, I have eight, but you notice I have multiple eights. So you have multiple places you could place it. Again, this is a strategy game. We're gonna have to, I am gonna have to block Mrs. Sears so that she doesn't get her four in a row. So sometimes I might have to put my counter in a spot that may not be beneficial for me, but it helps her not win the game. So let's go ahead and start. Okay. And you'll need two dice. So remember, you can also try and um, you find things that you might already have in games that you have at home. Mm -hmm. So you may have a pair of dice um, that are at home. Mm -hmm. So I have a six and a four. Mine is 10. So ooh, I get to put mine right there. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and um, steal this big one so then that way we can just use those there. So I got a three. And a three, so I have six. Let's see, hmm. Maybe she might go here, so I'm gonna try and get it close to there. I have a three and a three, six. So I'm kind of stuck, because Miss Sears took my spot. I got a four and a one. Four and one more is five. I'm gonna go right here. So again, we're just alternating our plays. Three, I'm sorry, I a saw two. a better move. Darn it. <laughs> <laughs> I have a two and a one, which is three. Oh my. I guess I'm kind of stuck here. I'm, I'm all over the place, man. Okay, so I did that four again. That was kind of a weird roll, but I have a four and a four or eight. 
Let's see. Hmm. Got to do four somehow. Let's see. Maybe I can try here. Maybe I'll be close to doing that two by two square. So I have a six and a two, eight. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Okay. Two and a four, so I have six. Hmm. Thinking. You notice we want to beat each other. We don't want to let the other person win. <laughs> Maybe here. Maybe here, because I could possibly block her, her four square there, or her two by two. I have a six and a two, so I have eight. Oh. A lot of eights today. Yeah. Okay. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Okay. Come on, five. Come on, five. Ah, I got seven. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, would that help me, though? Seven. What if I did it there? Mm. Mm. Yep, I'm seeing. She gets a five. I'm done. Four and a three, so I have seven. <laughs> oh, man. <sighs> okay. So we want a nine. We want a nine. No, no, or maybe a five no. to block her. I don't know. <laughs> Let's see. Come on. Three. Oh, come on. Six. Ah, three and three is six. I got six. Three and three. Hmm. Maybe this is the closest one I can see that I might be able to Now, block. you notice we are starting to run out of numbers. If we roll something that has already been covered and there's no other number, you lose your turn. So we want to make sure that our roll is lucky. So I have a four and a three, which is seven. I'll go to the only seven. But if there had not been a seven there, I would have lost my turn. Okay, come on. I got a two and a six. Well, there's nice six from before. <laughs> I needed a three with it. Uh, so eight. Oh, oh yes, I only have one eight. I'm going to have to go there. All right. Five and four is nine. Uh, maybe she won't notice. No, I notice it, but then I'm thinking, is it better to get me five? <laughs> uh, uh, okay. I'll block, I'll block. <laughs> hmm. I don't know. Let's see. Three and a three. So I have a six. There's no more sixes. Yes. <laughs> so I have a two and a two, which is four. She got it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, she won that one. <laughs> it's not over, though. I still have two on you, right? Should we start writing names on there? One? I know, right? We should. <laughs> OK, so our next game that we're going to be playing is called Addition War. And this you will need um, a deck of cards. Did you want to? Sure. So make sure to take out the jokers on this deck. And um, so in here, your aces will be 1. Your uh, jacks will be 11. Your queens will be 12. And your kings will be 13. For the lower grades, for, that's for second on up. For if you're a first grader, you want to go ahead and just make your jacks, queens, and kings just worth 10. So this is just like war, except for it's a little different. Once she has separated out the whole deck between the two of us, what we're going to do is we're going to then take our top two cards, not looking at the cards, until we flip them over. We will both flip over two cards, and from there we'll take our two cards and we will add them up. She'll add up her two, I'll add up my two. Whoever has the highest amount we'll get the four cards. Then, if we both get the same amount, where we both have the same total, then we put it off to the side and we play another hand of war, and whoever wins that hand wins that hand as well as the hand prior to it. So, we're having to do, Miss Sears, two cards. We're gonna hold it up to the camera so they can see. 
Oh, and I'm sorry. The purpose of the game is to get all the cards. Whoever, whoever will win will get all the deck of cards. So here we go. So here are our cards. And I didn't see what your cards were. I don't see what your cards are. <laughs> oh, okay. okay. I have a four and a two. I so have mine's six. I have a 10 and a nine, so I have 19. So I would win that. Thank you. So our next set of cards. I have an ace and a six, so I have seven. I have a king and an ace, so a king is, wait, hold on, remind me, is a 13, so I have 14. There you go. Ooh, maybe. <laughs> I have a king and an eight. Four and a two. Mm. I got six. You know what, the, I, wait, wait, I think I should have won that hand. Why? You never said the total. Give me that. <laughs> <laughs> you don't just win, you gotta do the math. <laughs> All right, I have a jack and a seven, and remind me again, jacks are? Jacks are 11. 11. So I have 18. I have three and three is six. <laughs> All right. Ooh. Five and five, which is 10. And king and nine, it's 13 and nine. Oh, my. 22. Thir She's trying to do the math for me. Look <laughs> at that. I'm on the spot, and so I'm doing the math. So I'm like, so I have 20, 22. There you go. I think a nine is just like a 10. So all I got to do is go up one more. So that's how I do it. So oh, that's I did. Yeah. So my thinking of the math was I took <laughs> the 10 from the 13 and the 9 and made the 20 and the 3 took the 1 from the 3. That's how I did it. All right. I have an 8 and a 7, 15. And I have an ace and a 2, it's 3. Thank you, ma'am. I have a 6 and a 4, 10. And I have a 9 and a 3, 12. Oh, this is pretty even. <laughs> I have a 10 and a 9, which is 19. And I have a queen and queen, which is 12 and 12, 24. Wow. Okay. Another compliment. So 3 plus 7, uh, I have 10. And I have a jack and a king, which is 11 and 13, so 24. Yeah. She's got all the face cards somehow down in the bottom there. All right. I have a 10 and a 5. And I have a six and a two, eight. All right. Oh, wait. You Thank have a you. Ten and a, wait, wait, wait. Oh, oh, 15, give it back. Give it back. 15, give it back. No. Oh, I'll give you that one. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Show, I got to be quick with this one. Okay, I have a queen and a jack. So that was what? 13 12 and 12? And 11. No, queen is 12 oh. and a jack's 11. So 23. And I have an eight and a six, 14. <laughs> All right. I have an ace and an eight, nine. And I have a jack and a 10, which is 21. I can already tell I lost that one. <laughs> okay, queen 12 and a four is uh, 16. And I have a seven and a five, which is 12. All right. So you would continue playing that till one person had all the cards. And I'm looking at mine, I have over half, I think. I don't know. I might have about half, too. Uh, all right. I guess I think we'll it call was that even Steven on that one. All right. We'll call that one a draw. Okay. Darn, because I was hoping to put my name up there. <laughs> Did you? No. You haven't put your names up there. I don't remember which ones I've won anymore. Maybe you guys remember at home um, who, who's keeping track. Um, all right. So the next game that we're going to play is called Catch the Stars. And on Catch the Stars, um, you're going to need three dice. So we're going to make sure we have those up here. We'll just take turns like going up and rolling the dice. Um, we also need six counters of the same color. So if you can recycle our counters again. And so the purpose of, of this game, um, when we're thinking about this, is to just use flexibility with um, your numbers and to be able to be using those numbers interchangeably within addition and um, subtraction. So the game that we're gonna be um, playing 
we're gonna actually be rolling three dice. Now, if you remember from um, some of your properties in math, one of the properties that we talk about um, in, um, in math is uh, the associative property. And so that associative property when we're talking about means that we can do anything with any combination of numbers. We can add them, subtract them, put them in any order, and they all should still um, make the same result. Okay, so kind of the idea or the principle behind this particular game is that we're going to be very flexible in the use of how we do those numbers. Okay, so let's say for instance, I rolled a five, a three, and a one on the first roll that I did. So that five and three and the one, I could add those all up together. I could say five plus three is eight, plus one more would be nine, and I would be able to put my sticky on that nine. This is just the example. So I would put that sticky again on that nine. But if I also wanted to maybe do that number with something of a subtraction in it, I could do five minus three, which would be two, plus one more, which would give me the number three, or I could put it on this three. The other possibility, I could also do five minus three, which would be two minus one, because those ones are really hard to sometimes figure out how you could do that. And I could put my sticky on the one at that point. So it's really being very strategic with how you're using your addition or your subtraction in order to be able to cover any of the stars that are still left uncovered. So be thinking about that associative property where it doesn't really matter what, what we're doing, but we're kind of interchangeably mixing those numbers that are in there. All right, so shall I do my first roll? Sure. Okay. I have a six, I have two, and I have Oh, I have two more, <laughs> so six, two, and two. So I'm gonna go ahead and add those up. So six plus two would be eight. Eight plus two would be 10. I'm gonna go ahead and cover up the star that is labeled 10. That is now my star. So I have a five, a five, and a three. Now we don't have a 13 on the board. Nope, it's only 1 to 12. So if I take 5 and 5 and subtract them, I'll get 0. And if I then add 3, I'll get 3. And hey, it's open. OK, I have a 6, a 4, and a 6. All right, so I'm going to do like what she did. I like that idea of doing the, the same um, digit and minusing each, it, it, each other and then adding that result, which would make it whatever that number was that we added to it, right? So six minus six is zero and anything plus zero is itself. So zero plus four would be four. All right. So I have a six, a five, and a two. All right, let me see if I can do any combination of this. So five, plus 6 is 11. 11 minus 2 is not, okay, not that will work. So I'm going to pick 9. And so it's not a situation that we're trying to get any kind of a tic-tac-toe here. We're just trying to cover up as many as we can and be as flexible as we can with the numbers. All right, so I have a 6, a 6, and a 2. And again, going to do that same strategy because I see it's open. I'm going to say 6 minus 6 is 0. 0 plus 2 is 2. I like that strategy. She stole that from me. <laughs> <laughs> stole it. And remember, if it's a good strategy, take it. Make it your own. So I have a 6, a 4, and a 2. So if I add 6 and 4, I get 10. 10 plus 2 is 12, and 12 is open. You notice I keep looking back before I make a decision if I want to add or subtract. Now, if you were working on a, on a tic-tac-toe, she probably would have, ha she would probably have it soon, I'm guessing, but well, thankfully we are not doing that. Okay, that fell down on the ground. So, we have a five, a three, and a one. We could use this one if we need to. 
We have a five, a three, and a one. Oh, well, those are all the scenarios that I gave you in the beginning, so let's see. Um, I can do five plus three plus one more is nine. Nope, she's got it. Five plus three minus one, so that's eight minus one, seven. Seven is open. Let me try that one. Five plus three, again, eight minus one would be that seven. All right, so I have a three, a three, and a one. Ah. All right, that works. So if I add my 3 and 3, I get a 6. Minus 1, I get my 5. So what does happen if we cannot finagle it and get a number? What does happen? I've forgotten. What does happen? I'd have to look. <laughs> you lose a turn. You lose I a would turn. lose a turn, probably, I would think, yeah. Okay. All right, keep going. We've got to fill up right. this board to see who wins this game. We might have to go back and play a few of these, too, because it sounds like we have more time. Um, we have a 6, a 2, and a 1. Hmm. So let's see. 1 plus 2 is 3, plus 6 more is 9. Nope, I can't use that. How about 6 minus 2 is 4? Plus one would be five. She's got that. So let's see. One plus six is seven. Minus two, we've got that five. Hmm. Let's see. Six minus one. See if I can figure out how to do that. One, six. I, I may be stumped here. I may not be able to do anything. Uh-oh. Unless we go into negative numbers here. So let's see. So 6 plus 1 is 7. Minus 2 is 5. Can't do that. 6 plus 2 is 8. Minus 1 is 7. Can't do that. 6 plus 2 plus 1 is 9. Can't do that. Hmm. I think I lost my turn. <laughs> See, the luck of the dice are not with me today. Six, four, and two. So six plus two is eight. Eight minus four is four. Nope. I have four plus, no, there's no zero. I was going to do four plus two is six. Six minus six is zero. There's no zero. Um, six minus, two. no, that won't work either. Six minus two is four. Oh, four. I have one. Oh, I do. Six Shh. minus two. I figured it out. Six minus two is four. Four plus four is eight. And the eight does work. Woo! Uh, <gasps> darn. I was thinking it, but it, it wasn't happening. It wasn't the same thing. My guys don't like me today. Okay, so four, three, and two. Hmm, let's think about this one. Okay, how can I get there? So 2 plus 3 is 5, minus 4 would be 1. Oh, man. All right. I want to think about those combinations. <laughs> 5, 6, and 2. Let's see. Wait. How many do you have right now? You have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 of yours, and I have 5 of mine. So uh, we have we two can... numbers left. So really these two numbers may determine the make or break on who wins. So we have to get 11 or a 6. So if I add, oh my, 6 minus 5 is 1, plus 2 is 3, that won't work. 6 minus 2 is 4, 4 plus 5 is 9, that won't work. Uh, 6 plus 5 is 11, minus 2 is 9, that won't work. 6 plus 2 is 8, 8 minus 5 is 3. Did I go through all the combinations? I think you did. All right. You might lost, have, but let's see. Turn. So, and 5 minus 2 would be 3. She's helping me out. Maybe she'll I'm figure trying. it out. <laughs> I'm trying. I really, I want to get this 11 or this 6. Let's see. Maybe I can get both. Okay. I have a 1, a 1, and a 2. <laughs> That's not going to help me. Because any way I do that, it's not going to work. <laughs> I have a 6, a 3, and a 2. Hmm. 9, 10, 11. Ha-ha, oh, 6 plus 3 is 9. 9 plus 2 is 11. Okay. Go! 
she's ahead. I got to get this six somehow. Let's see. Okay. I have a six, a six, and a two. So let's see. Six plus two is eight. No, I don't think I'm going to be able to do it either way. You notice I'm shaking my head right away. I'm like, no, nope, there's no way to get that combo. But I would normally not give that can, away. Can we do a variation here? Because I would have it if I did a variation. What's the variation? If I did six times two minus the six, I would have a six. I don't know. That is a variation that we could use. <laughs> your name, yeah, if your family decides, so whoever you're playing against, you can add multiplication in there. Yeah. So it's up to you. I mean, we didn't decide the rules ahead. I'll go okay. ahead and I'll, I'll let you do the next turn. Okay. But we could have used six times two, got that 12, and minus the six to get the six. Three and three and one. There's no way I can get six from that. Hmm. Unless I divided it by one. Three plus three is six. <laughs> That's true. There we she go. could See? do three divided by three. Well, no, three plus three is six, six divided by five. one. Yeah, mm -hmm. That's true. All right, let's see. Oh, I think I got it. I she think did. I got it. Okay, I have a six, a five, and a five. I'm going to do five minus five, which is zero, and then add my six, which would be six. We tied. <laughs> So if we count up our counters, we have four, five, six, she has six, and I have four, five, six. So we tied on that one. That was good job. Air five. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, our next game. Oh, I'm sorry. Did you want to talk about any of the other nope. variations for Catch a Star? Um, so there are a couple of other variations that you could do for Catch a Star. So we did talk about the inclusion of being able to use multiplication um, or division. You could also play that game on your own. Did you, did you see how hard it was for us just to try to fill the board with two of us playing? Imagine you doing that by yourself and trying to fill the board. So that is another variation of the game that you could do. But it's really just a lot of flexibility with numbers and, and thinking about different ways that you could use addition and subtraction with playing that particular game. So um, I invite you guys to try that on your own too because it's very challenging. All right, our next game, I think she's getting it set up, mm -hmm. is called Pick a Product. Um, this one is very similar to the one that we did earlier with the add em up. Um, and so we're going to um, each be... Um, Do you want me to introduce it? Perfect. All right. <laughs> so it's very similar to add em up, where you have to get four in a row. Very similar. You have to do it either horizontal, vertical, either side of diagonal, or your two by two, which is really different than uh, tic-tac-four. Tic-tac-four. <laughs> Tic-tac-toe. Connect four. Or connect four. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, mm, putting them together there. Uh, so in this one, again, you're trying to do it, but you will have three dice. So it's another game played with three dice. But what, with the three dice with this one versus catch a star is you don't have to use all three dice. You, if you roll a five, a six, and a five, you pick two of them that you want to multiply to find that product. Once you have done your multiplication, if I picked my five and five, I could put my sticky note on 25. Then Mrs. Sears will take her row, uh, her roll. Roll, thank you. <laughs> and you'll continue doing that until someone has four in a row. So let's go ahead and play. And you notice my name is going to start showing up on more and more, less on for her. So let's well, we've had some ties, so I think we're okay. I don't know about that. Yeah. I'm ready. <laughs> All right. Do you right, want to go first? Or? I will go first. Okay. So I have four, one, and one. So I'm going to do four times one. <laughs> well, uh, you could have done one times one. There is only one oh. one. There, oh, there, there actually is, is only one one. one. You know so, what? I'm going to do it. I'm one just thinking. I, again, I help. So she thinks I'm trying to win, but I'm very helpful. I'm competitive. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's why. Look at, again, look at your game board before you start and think about yeah. where you could strategically go. Being that there was only one one, I would have taken the one times one. So, I didn't notice until she pointed it okay, out. Okay. So I have a four, a one, and a three. So I could either do three times four. Um, I could do three times one, or I could do um, four times one. So 
Let me just go ahead and try the 12, the four times three. So if I had four rows of three each in them, I would have 12. So three, six, nine, 12. I'm gonna go ahead and put that in there. Just because it's on the same row as hers. And she might wanna go there. <laughs> oh man. So I have a six, a four, and a one. And I'm trying to see what I could do. And I am going to go with the 6 times 4 is 24. Oh, she's getting closer. Well, OK. I thought maybe you'd go somewhere else. But never mind. I'm not going to help. Oh, <laughs> well, I'd she already placed that, it. She could have had that little 4 square up in here if she wanted to. But yeah, there you go. <laughs> I'll, I'll help. I don't know. It, it does help. <laughs> All right. So, um, so like in thinking about that six times four, how did you solve that, Tammy? Um, I was thinking of uh, six rows of four and knowing that there would be four six times. Okay. So I got 24. Okay. I have a three, a two, and a one. So, again, I could use that one and multiply it by either the two or the three and, again, get that same number. Or I could do three times two, which was six, which is right in my vicinity where I want to be as far as trying to get that two by two square. So I'm going to put that six right up here. So two times three, I can just do three plus three in my head, or I could go two, four, and six, right? All right, so I have a five, four, and three. So I could do five times three. Mm, I, don't, I don't like where 15 is. I could do five times four. Ooh, I'm going to do the five times four is 20 because it is right next to one of my, one of my sticky notes. Is five one of those easy numbers to just multiply? Uh -huh. I, I like doing fives because I can skip count really quickly by fives. Uh, let's see, I have a 5, a 2, and a 6. So let's see. Ooh, I, I, I do have a 5 times 2. Again, that 5's that easy number to um, go to really quick and do a skip count. So if I did 5, no. 10, you don't want me to go there? No. <laughs> oh, but I just did notice something else. I, I could do 5 times 6, so 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. I could go there and I could almost block her. So that's an opportunity there. So hmm. the thing is, is do we block another person or do we continue helping ourselves? I'm going to do the 5 times 6, so I'm going to put my 30 she right there. She blocked me. Yeah, we'll see if that works. See if my strategy pays off. So I have a four, a six, and a one. So I can do, oh, I am going to do one times six to continue trying to get my four in a row. Mm -hmm. OK, let's see. I have a four, a four, and a three. So. I could maybe possibly do 4 times 4. That would make it like a square number. So 4 times 4 is 16. Um, I could do 4 times 3, which is 12. Oh, there's a 12 right there, right where I need it to be. <laughs> so I think I'm going to do 4 times oh. 3. So I have 4 groups of 3. So 3, 6, 9, 12. I'm going to put that in that spot. Let's see, I could still kind of go here too. It's a oh, thought. A little stinker. <laughs> All right, a six, a two, and a one. I am going to do two times one. Mm, I see where she's going. She's either looking for a four here or a nine here. Okay, so that no, means. No, we don't want her to notice what I'm doing. <laughs> I, I'll figure it out. I'll figure it out. Well, I give you that one in the beginning, and that's very you did hard not to get. Give it to me. You didn't See, even look, notice it. I get three ones. I could have bunkoed. No, I got three ones, <laughs> or Yahtzee, if we were playing that. 
Three ones, I'm not gonna be do anything with that. I'm gonna lose my turn because I let her take the one. <laughs> I have a two, five, and one. Oh, well, all right, I could do five times two is 10, uh, and I can block her by doing that. I could do five times one is five. Mm, that doesn't really help me any. Um, five, two times one is two. I don't think there are any more twos. All right, so I guess I will do five. five. Oh, I could do, all right, so I don't want to do that. I want to do the five times two. And block me. And block you. Yeah. Oh. Now, after you pointed that out to me, now I'm double checking all the numbers. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> it's good. We'll, we'll get there. We'll get there. Uh, okay. Three times five, or excuse me, three, five, and two. So I was trying to do the math really quick in my head. So, well, here's one I could probably use. So I do need that 15. So if I do three times five, 5, 10, 15, I could do that. She's taken my 10, um, and the only other one I could possibly do would be the 2 times the 3, which was 6, and I don't know, that's not in any place strategically that I'm needing it right now. So I am going to go ahead and do my 3 times 5, or 15. Mm. <laughs> 4, 1, and 6. I'm going to do my four times one right away. You know why? Because she won. One, two, three, Stinker. four. <laughs> <laughs> she, is, she is catching up a lot quicker than we had hoped. All right. Okay, so um, we're, did you guys like that? Um, like that did you like that game? That was really a fun game. I yeah, think we've had fun with a lot of the games that we have. We still do have two more games to go through here. The next one is uh, called Slides and Letters. And um, this is very similar to Shoots and Ladders. And so if you have a younger sibling at home, um, please, please work with them on this particular um, game because this is a very much a counting game and it's a skill that you also need practice on but your younger siblings need practice on it as well. Um, so the premise of this game is that we're going to roll um, a die and that die is going to be the number that we are able to move on our game board. Now the game board that you're going to have at home goes all the way up to 100, but for TV purposes, we adapted it. <laughs> and so you'll notice that we are going to the number 30, okay? That is the, the furthest we can go. So how this works is when I roll the die, let's say I rolled a 3, if I counted, did my counter, and, I, and you want to hear the count when they're doing this as well. So when you're playing this, make sure you're, you're saying the count out loud. You would go one, two, three. If I hit that three, what do I see? You see a ladder. Well, what do you do with the ladder? You climb up the ladder, yes. So I would be able to climb up the ladder and immediately be closer to my goal of 30. I would be on space number seven. So by rolling that wonderful three, I would give myself a little boost and get a little bit closer to my goal. But let's say I was further along, perhaps I was on number 11, and I rolled specifically from that count. And so um, from that count, let's say, from seven, I rolled a four, I would say seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. If I had rolled that four, what would have happened when I got to that 11? I would roll back down to a two. Wah, wah. <laughs> Did you also notice in her counting sequence how it is different from shoots and ladders with the slides and ladders? Is you do not count, oh, I only rolled four. You don't count one, two, three, four. You start from the number you're on and keep count up four. So that is the difference between those two games. Okay, and you want to make sure you really think about that count and emphasize that count and working on that counting on because that is a skill that we, maybe we might be able to mentally add those numbers in our head, but our younger siblings are still working on getting that, those skills and building that fluency down. Okay, so you want to play a really quick round? Let's do it. I, I don't know if we'll have time. Hopefully, we might be able to get through it, but let's see how lucky we are. 
Okay, I rolled a six, so I'm gonna count. Oops, I better get my sticky. <laughs> so I rolled a six, so I would go one, two, three, four, five, six. All right. And I roll a four. So one, two, three, four. Okay, I'm gonna leave that sticky up because that's gonna stay my sticky. All right, I got another six. Sixes have been my thing today, I don't know. So I have six, seven, eight. I better keep track on my fingers somehow, let me think. So six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. <laughs> this is hard, 11, 12. Okay, I'm at 12. I don't have a shoot, I don't have a ladder, I'm just at 12. <laughs> so you have to have one way, some way to keep track. Yeah, some way to keep track. I couldn't do that with, both, with my finger moving and my other thing. I'm gonna have to find a different way. So I rolled a three, so I will continue counting. So I have four, five, six, seven. And I'm gonna use her strategy since I did like that. Okay, that's what I'm thinking here. Let's see, five, okay. So, I can do that, I have a hand. I'm gonna just use this hand this time, okay. So, 13, 14, 15, 16, that's a hard finger to get there, and 17, ah, 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 I got a ladder. <laughs> at 17, I'm gonna climb up that ladder, and now I'm at 23. Did Almost you see there. that smile on her face? Oh, she, mm -hmm. Climbing the ladder. One. Eight. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It's too bad this didn't go to a seven. Okay. <laughs> so I got a five. Ooh, I am closer though. Okay, so, and I like this five because it works really well with moving this hand. <laughs> so let's see, let's go 23. I'm at 23, 24 this way, <laughs> 25, 26, 27, 28. Oh man. I and just... if I had landed on that 27, good thing I didn't roll a four, I would have fell all the way down. And uh, because I knew what count I was on, thankfully I can put my little sticky back up here. I got six. All right. So I start on eight. Nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, and one more is 14. But look what you have. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, so and I just need a two. And, you know, I don't remember if I have to roll exactly a two to get out. I don't or remember. Or if I can roll past a two and get out. But I know we only have a few minutes left, so I'll probably just see if I can. Oh, and I rolled a two. <laughs> okay, so 28. So 29, 30, I am, I am the queen. Thank you very much, no. <laughs> <laughs> With slides and ladders. <laughs> All right, so we did have one very last game, but this was a game that was um, played on um, one of the other days that we did math. Yeah, so. so we're just gonna go back over it really fast. It's called Multiplication War. And um, the first thing you do, the first way you can do it is you take a deck of cards, take out your jacks, queens, kings, and your jokers. Then what you do is you shuffle it up and then deal it out just like you did with addition one. After you deal it out, so I'm gonna deal out a few really fast so you can get the idea. Take them. We will <laughs> both show you our cards and then with multiplication where we have to take those two, seven and king, and so we have to, well, did we say this was an 11 or is this a 10? So right now it would have not, do another one. Okay. It would have been taken out. <laughs> I got a four. <laughs> so we have seven and four. Whoever said the product first got both 28. cards. 28. Hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, so that is one variation. And you just keep doing it. Whoever wins is the one who gets the whole deck of cards in their hands. Give me, a little give me. pause. <laughs> the variation is, is to leave the jacks, queens, and kings in there. And the jacks will be 11, the king, what, yeah. Jacks will be 11, queens will be 12, kings will be 13. And if you wanted to, you could leave the jokers in and make them 14 to make it a little harder if you're playing against uh, someone who's a little older. 
If you're playing against someone who's a little younger, take those out. Just practice in from your ones to tens. Aces will be ones. So I think that's did it. Did I miss any other variation? You uh, can play different kinds, and in the instructions, we'll tell you how to play flat fraction war, decimal war, or guess the card. So we wanted to thank you. Again, I am Mrs. Gaudet. And I am Mrs. Sears, and you guys have been excellent mathematicians today, really focusing in on those skills and playing games. Games are a wonderful way to practice those uh, facts, um, whether they be multiplication, addition, subtraction, um, any of those operations. This is a great way to really practice those facts, and you guys did an excellent job. All right, and thank you again. Thanks for joining us at, on this episode of At Home with APS. Have a great day. Bye-bye.